Some weeks are good and some weeks are bad. I did not think that it would work out that I was going to be able to show you both right off the bat. But here we are. Last week was fantastic. I walked over 70,000 steps or 25 miles. I exercised five out of the seven days. I did my thing. Then came this week. On Monday, I was in pain. Lots and lots of pain. Osaka Sakabo, good morning. Today there's no intro. I am doing my best to look at where the freaking camera is. I apologize in advance. I'm probably not gonna look at the camera that much to begin with. I started filming in the car because the wind is ridiculous. That's what you saw in the intro. Today's day eight and I'm in pain, y'all. Um here's the thing. When I started the original journey back in March of 2020, I said, I'm going to be in pain whether I walk or not, so I might as well walk. Now, when I started this journey eight days ago, I said, I'm going to be tired and exhausted, and those are two different things, by the way, whether I walk or not, so I might as well just walk. I haven't been in this much pain when I wake up in the morning since over two years ago when I started going gluten-free. My back hurts, but it's not the lower back. It's not the upper back. It's like kind of in that middle spot. My legs hurt. The muscle from my butt to my knee is on fire. The part of your foot, the front of your foot that um, goes up to meet your leg is killing me. I am trying to figure out how to say this nicely. I am just in a lot of pain. And I can't tell you what it is because I haven't had any gluten. I'm just in a lot of pain. And, you know, it's funny because I walked the entire walk crying because I'm in pain. And, of course, I would have to stop every time. And, yes, I'm holding my hand with my other arm because <laughs> I'm in pain <laughs> um, I would stop crying long enough to say hi to everybody on the walk and then come back and thank God school's out this is the first week of, of Christmas break there's not that many people walking at the time that I walk because to be honest with you I don't know where I got the strength to smile at everybody my philosophy is they don't have to know in fact, one of my regulars commented, oh my God, you're back, because I've been walking. In the last month, month and a half, I've been walking more than I had been walking in the last few months. And it looks just like when I started, that I came five days a week, I walked three to four miles a day, and that was it. I'm just in huge amounts of pain. And I'm not saying this to bitch and mope, I'm saying this because if somebody else out there is in pain and you can move just do it take it from this 55 year old Puerto Rican with an invisible illness IBS and God knows what else just do it I don't want to end up in a wheelchair two three years from now and not do what I set out to do that is I guess the message for today just keep watching I have a couple other Tuesday it rained all day Wednesday the weather dipped to are we really in Florida weather this morning the car died and I thought I was not going to be able to walk and then I did Osaka Sakabo hi I'm only showing you my face for a second because I really don't want to sell my face on this thing and now I can't turn it around so I guess you're stuck with me okay so here's the short version of the long story Today's Thursday, the last time I walked was Monday. Uh, Tuesday, it woke up raining and it was horrible. And then on Wednesday, it was completely cloudy, ugly, and super cold. But it wasn't horribly cold. It went from 80 degrees on Tuesday to 45, 50 degrees on Wednesday. Now this morning, I woke up at 545. I had no pain and I figured, you know, when I wake up with no pain, I have a good hour before my body realizes I'm awake. So I figure I would be halfway down the walk by the time it figure out, hey, I'm in pain. 
so I jump in the car. I'm about to jump in the highway when the car malfunctions. And the last time the car did that to me was in the middle of the highway. And within five minutes, it shot completely off and I was not gonna risk it. So knowing that I had about five minutes leeway before the car completely shut off, I turned around and went back home. Now I'm pissed because I wanted to walk. And we have one car left that actually works, sort of. And I went ahead and I had to take my daughter to work. So I went ahead, drove her to work, said, I'm not going. I'm just going to go to Target and go home because I need masks. <laughs> and somewhere along the drive from my daughter's job to Target, I decided to come walk. So yeah, that happened today. You'll find out the rest of the story soon. First question is, why was I in pain? Was it because I tried to do too much last week? Was it because I didn't sleep well? The weather? The booster shot? Remember that old Golden Girls episode where Sophia kept saying, there's a hurricane a coming based on her arthritis pain? It would make sense that my body was letting me know we were on our way to wet and cold weather. Maybe it was a little bit of everything. Point is, no matter what I do between tomorrow and Saturday, I'm going to be at a minimum a day short for the week. Just remember, the weeks on Fitbit are from Sunday to Saturday. As of right now, I only have 34,000 steps done. I will probably get the minimum 40,000 steps for the week, but I doubt that we will reach 70,000 steps and I'm okay with it. Some weeks, you just can't predict how bad it's going to be. Now, I wanted to keep accountable for the food, but a food diary seems so boring to me. I'm just showing you the highlights because they provided an aha moment for me. I eat a regular diet except for one thing, no gluten. I'm the kind of person that sees their symptoms disappear in some areas, minimizing others when I eat gluten-free. That causes some challenges, and I really have to hand it to my family who have all adapted to eating whatever we get, which is usually, you guessed it, gluten-free. They do buy their own loaf of bread, which they toast on a separate toaster for cross-contamination elimination. Most days, we do really good. Now, for those of you new to the channel, I live with IBS, which stands for Irritable Bowel Syndrome. From the name, you would think it has to do with the digestive system. It involves so much more. Whether you believe the theory that IBS is a symptom of other illnesses like chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia, or you think IBS is a, is a disease and the symptoms mirror other conditions, the truth is we all have very different reactions to food. I know a lot of people living with IBS that cannot even look at dairy products and they really get sick on them. I stopped drinking milk when I was two years old, but I love cheese, ice cream, and yogurt and I enjoy them all the time. I have noticed I react to gluten and it's just not bathroom issues. I have an ear condition called Meniere's, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, which has basically left me almost deaf on the left ear. There are days when I can hear better than others, but the tinnitus that affects that ear is always there. I have this rash that I developed on my right knee called Dermatitis herpetiformis. I am putting the name on the screen because I don't know how to say it, which is a dead giveaway that somewhere I had gluten. It will itch for a few days, but the actual rash might stay for, with me for weeks. Quantity does not seem to be related to it though. There have been times when I just have to have it. Usually, Starbucks cheese Danish is the culprit. And when I eat that, I might have it for a week. And I mean the rash. Then some other time, I might be accidentally exposed to gluten in minuscule amounts, like transfer from a pan that was used to cook something with gluten, which is why we have separate bread toasters, and I will have the rash for a month. There really doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. We had some really great things during the week, but the best one came with an aha moment. We went to this place called Coqui Restaurant. We ordered empanadas, stuffed potatoes, and alcapurrias. Recipes and original images all linked below. Now, the alcapurias are basically a meal on a fried vehicle. They are amazingly Puerto Rican and amazingly good. They are also, out of everything we ordered, the only thing I can eat. 
That started me thinking. The average Puerto Rican dinner is gluten-free. When we were kids, our regular dinner was rice and beans, some form of meat, and green salad. In all honesty, it was two lettuce leaves and one slice of tomato. Eventually, my sister discovered cucumbers and we added that to the mix. We finished it all up with a touch of salad dressing. Now, I didn't like cucumbers then, but I have to admit, it was pretty decent dinner plate with all the major components. I mean, we had vegetables, we had the rice, we had beans, we had meat, we had protein, carbs, and everything in between. I got the image that you're looking at from a restaurant that is linked below as well, which also reminded me that when we were good, we also got some avocado slices and or fried plantain. And now I'm hungry. And yes, this is from the menu for that restaurant where I got all of this reminders. The point I'm trying to make is that dinners in Puerto Rico did not have a lot of gluten and that started me thinking if maybe I should go back to my roots. Now the book you're seeing on the screen was gifted to me by my mother. When each of her children left the home, well okay, all but the oldest, who married a woman who was pretty good at the kitchen, she gifted us a copy of her favorite cookbook. My mom cooked from memory and she was an amazing cook. But she was following a tradition started by her mother. She had a very beaten up version of this book herself. In fact, the covers were missing and I've tried to find it everywhere, but unfortunately it's gone. This copy is 34 years old and I have another one, which was my brother's copy and it's now in my daughter's library. I think the best thing for me to do is work through that book and relearn some old recipes and add some new ones I've never tried. That sounds more interesting than rattling out everything I ate in the last few days. I think. <sighs> well, the week isn't over. Tomorrow is a new day and we will go to the park, walk and work hard to make this apartment Christmas ready. I will keep making videos to keep myself accountable and I hope this inspires you to make whatever change you want to make in your life, no matter what your age is. If you really want to pursue something, age is just a number. Thanks for watching, and thank you to my patrons and my rock stars. <laughs>